Hi, my name is Pooja Bale and I am a conservation biologist. I also happen to be an ecological educator and a sustainable lifestyles coach and lots of other things. But essentially I studied animal biology and wildlife conservation in England for six years. And um, I knew my calling was the outdoors and the environment pretty much since I was, I was 11 years old. Thanks to mom and dad who always uh, sent us on camps and read us lots of books about animals and wildlife. The interest was honed at a very young age. As a teenager, I worked at the Pune uh, Snake Park as a volunteer and that uh, chiseled my interest even more in wildlife and animals. And I took off for my education. I came back in 2008 and uh, have been working in India since then. Somewhere at the end of 2008 and 2009, I had the great opportunity of uh, coming face to face with, uh, actually virtually meeting a couple called the Soderbergs from Sweden. And they were essentially planning spaces across the globe that would be about sustainability and uh, good living and organic living. Uh, so their foundation is called the Open World Foundation and the Open World Cafe. And we were creating spaces across the globe for such things. And that was when the idea of the farm was born. It's 2016 now, so it's been, been four and a half, five odd years since we started thinking about it and they were very encouraging they essentially said please go ahead and you know create a space we need more spaces for these things so we started uh, started the farm and when we started there was no blueprint or vision in mind as such we essentially had uh, all i knew was that i wanted to create a space where people can come come back to nature and essentially come outdoors right uh, having a very firm wildlife biology background, the interest first was about creating a nature interpretation center and a place where people can learn about wildlife. That's what the first vision for the, for the space was. So we essentially have uh, two and a half acres of a rectangular-ish plot, so it is parallel to the road. Uh, the road uh, leads up to, up to um, a defense establishment, uh, so it's a very quiet road in general. And uh, thankfully very green. When we came in 2008, uh, it was, I remember it was the August of 2008, it was a beautiful monsoon. The place was all lush green and had a lot of water and I was very excited. I said, yay, you know, it's perfect until I came into the summer and realized there's absolutely no water. Uh, but that challenge we are addressing uh, every year with the monsoon by rainwater harvesting. And uh, we started off with laying out some pathways, clearing the space for exotic species like lantana, and didn't disturb any of the existing vegetation over here, kept it pretty much intact. The first task was to um, take, uh, create water harvesting uh, ponds, so put out these uh, high density polyethylene sheets. They have been one of the largest carbon footprints on the farm, uh, but we created, so in Marathi they are called uh, Shetari, and we essentially created these farm ponds as such for rainwater harvesting. We had created three first, so had a collective capacity of storing almost um, almost 900,000 litres of water, but we covered over two of those because there hasn't been enough rainfall. So now we have one that harvests through the through a favourable rain year, it can harvest about 400,000 litres of water. And uh, that sort of sustains us through the summer. We have, uh, we have that and we have small water ponds that we have laid out for the animals and the birds that visit and we fill those out through the summer. In the last four years, we have done a lot of plantation. So we have planted almost 1,400 species of uh, trees, bushes, plants. A lot of them are host plants for butterflies and birds uh, that can welcome it back. So through the last four and a half years, we have had a count, species count started at about four or five, and the bird count has gone up to 62 species of birds, which is, I think it's pretty awesome that they've all, you know, come back to, come back to uh, the land. And uh, we have lots of insects, reptiles, snakes that come and visit. Uh, so that's pretty wonderful. Um, the structures that we've built here, so the idea of the farm has always been to create a space out of, uh, create a space with minimal carbon footprint and very little externalized cost. So externalized cost is the, the lifeline of a product that you use, right from the start point to the end point. Uh, that is why we used a lot of scrap and waste. We used a lot of donated material. Um, the first thing that came onto the farm were tires and all the bases of majority of our structures have been made out of tires. Currently we have four structures over here. In the past we had a beautiful knowledge cafe. Uh, it was all made out of tires and bamboo 
and uh, somewhere around the august of 2014 2014 the cafe the knowledge cafe crashed and that was a very very challenging and heartbreaking moment for me because i'd i'd built it myself with with help obviously from volunteers and some labor to do the manual work but i'd pretty much been part of building it and it fell and that was like the final nail in the coffin at that point i really felt very lost because that was where the heart of the place lay the knowledge cafe served as a place for corporate workshops for students camps uh, it served as a place for meditation retreats for people we even had a sufitation and dance station workshop a uh, few times in the space but uh, we will rebuild it it will come back but at the moment we have four structures the oldest structure on the farm actually is still standing it's made out of uh, dung mud and earth bags earth bags are essentially old gunny bags filled with soil and we've velcroed them together with old barbed wire so they sit on top of each other pretty firm and uh, it's we waterproof it with uh, billboards so ho- you know hoardings and flex that people remove from around the city so we use that to waterproof for the roofing we have a tent uh, a tent that i live in and we have a community kitchen we are in the process of building another structure and people are more than welcome to come and be a part of building this structure uh, so we will be building it the same in the same manner using a lot of uh, scrap and waste and the bathroom is also very pretty it's i, I think it's an extremely decadent bathroom uh, you know it's open from the top and has plants coming down and it's pretty beautiful it's all made out of bamboo as well and uh, yeah so that's the sort of way we've made the space we've used a little bit of cement here and there for some waterproofing much to our dismay but it's been all right uh, it's been a learning lesson uh, so the structures have been made uh, as eco friendly as possible they're comfortable they are uh, tidy they're not luxurious obviously but they're very comfortable the highlights of the place since we started so 2008 is when uh, 2009 is when i first visited the plot and we've had several different things but one of the fondest memories that i have over the time uh, was this organic mela and pirni party that we did and a pirni party is basically a party for sewing so we did it in in august so we had lots of different people come and we had some organic farmers who joined us and we had somebody who made recycled furniture who joined us and we had 175 people who all were tilling the land and you know sewing it and plowing it and it was it was incredible to see people work with with the soil i remember that very very fondly soon after that uh, we had lots of different workshops and kids camps i mean kids have had overnight treasure hunts they've been you know pitching tents they've had survival camps all sorts of stuff at the farm um somewhere in 2014 after the after the knowledge cafe crashed i sort of went into i went quiet i didn't know what to do with the space funds became tight because you know the the place wasn't flourishing because of the structure falling so that was very challenging authorities were also being uh, particularly difficult about letting us do stuff there because of you know, concerns their own concerns but uh, something very beautiful happened in the december of 2014 we had and subsequently for the next 6 months uh, i was lucky enough to be part of i mean the farm and me as a person was very lucky enough to be part of um some elephant rescuing so we had one blind elephant that came and stayed with us for two and a half months while she was transiting so she was essentially passing through to the elephant care and conservation center up in mathura uh, which is run by a lovely organization called, called wildlife sos and she happened to stay in transit with us and she turned everything around you know she gave me new found hope she gave me a lot of courage uh, it was also a very personally challenging time for me uh, the darkest i have known yet in 32 years but uh, I, i do think she came just to be there for me uh, she left and went on to mathura and is is a very happy happy elephant there soon after i got a call saying puja we need uh, we we have some more transiting through that area and they need to take a stop before the long journey to mathura and next thing i knew we had four elephants that were rescued from the circus they're known as the nut herd so when the nut herd came i was actually staying on the farm so i was part of their daily routine there was a team of elephant um, elephant workers you know elephant staff that was helping out with everything and yeah they moved on about a month and a half after the paperwork was sorted on to mathura and they're also settled there and that's sort of when i realized that the place has potential and the re- the vision needs to be realigned it possibly doesn't 
have the capacity to be a nature information center, but it can certainly be a place that brings people closer to closer to the earth and just invites them into an insight into themselves and insight into into what's happening. So we've built it already. It's been ready. We're working on it a lot more now to make it more um, appealing to urban dwellers as such to come and be a part of it. And uh, yeah, at the moment, at this very moment, the way a people can be part of it is you can volunteer at the farm to be building structures with us and doing the work over here. We work predominantly on volunteers and interns. Uh, you can be, you can come and stay at the farm and be part of the movement and the community that we are, we are trying to create over here. Uh, the community is of of one called Love, Awareness, and Learning. So you know, essentially, come and be a part of that. You can also be donors for the organization if you know you cannot take time out to actually come and uh, help us. So you can support the farm from far away. We have, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have about 1,400 trees that need to be looked after. So we have these adopter tree sort of setups that we have created where you know you can be part of plantation through the monsoon but you can also be a part of uh, taking care of the existing trees that are there. We have nine dogs on the farm, they're all extremely friendly. We have six cats and uh, yeah that's that's the people that I share, that's the souls that I share the space with. And I often tell a lot of my friends that if I've had a hard day in the city, the moment I've walked through the doors of the farm, I've kind of forgotten what I was so perturbed about. And that is the capacity of this place. It kind of makes you just happy, I think. It puts a smile on your face. And uh, yeah, that's the journey of the farm very quickly. It's been, a, it's been a challenging journey, but it's been a beautiful learning. It has been extremely rewarding in many many ways so the rewards and the testaments have come from the birds that have returned from the langurs that visit from the spotted deer that come in the summer and we're in pune's we're in within the confines of a city still we're just slightly set outside the craziness of of the urban world but we're still right there in 10 minutes you know you've you've reached not even 10 in five minutes you've reached the crowds of pune so to be it's like an oasis it's beautiful and uh, yeah, I mean, I welcome you all to be part of the movement. We are creating a global movement. We are creating a mind space for people to be part of. Even if you physically can't be at the farm, uh, you can be part of it uh, virtually. Uh, we are creating a lot of different avenues for people to essentially reconnect with, with the soul and with the earth. And yeah, for the future holds, I, I cannot predict what the future holds, but the idea is that we create create more and more aware people and more and more love in the world to be a part of part of what is essentially a very beautiful planet and that is pretty much what i've laid out for the future and what the team has laid out for the future we have had uh, countless people who have come and been a part of it from day one we still have many people who come and go uh, we've had supporters donors we've had critics and those critics are all important because they have challenged me further to make this real and yeah I mean, I guess that's the story of the farm and that's the story of what I pretty much live for.